what is going on this is jd with x7x ellis gaming and uh you know i have a special guest today his name is mr justin price how you doing justin price i'm doing well man thank you so much for having me on oh yeah man no problem no problem i see your gamer tag uh on here is baby monster 1992 <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's actually it's really interesting um a producing partner of mine uh, she has a company called Baby Monster Entertainment, and okay. so I just thought it'd be interesting to have a Fortnite account, just paying Otis to her because <laughs> she's uh, such an inspiration. Awesome. That sounds great. All right, cool. So uh, this is a new concept that we're doing right now. So what's going on is it's going to be two people just vibing, playing games, and I'm going to ask questions that way we can get to know this person better. In this case, Justin Price and everything he's been through and what's going on. And uh, we're going to educate the community and we're just going to play games and get some dubs. Or try to, at least. That's the main goal while we're answering the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's do it, man. You ready? Let's, let's get ready. I'm ready. Go. I'm a little ready. I'm a little nervous uh, to shoot and talk, but we'll see what happens. Oh, man. Shoot and talk. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can see how that would go. I don't know if we want to do uh, duos, right? We're going to do duos? Yeah, probably should do duos. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so excited. With all this I am updates. too, man. Have you played Fortnite before? Um, well, oddly enough, uh, I've played it for the last three to four months and it's actually helped me in the middle of, uh, you know, cause I'm a producer, mm -hmm. a director, uh, content creator. And so as I've been in between projects, mm -hmm. Fortnite has really helped me sort of keep my mind centered, man, because we've had three to four scripts come in and I've had to develop and, and really kind of crunch in on some of the particulars on it, man. But this is, this has been such such an ease on the mind that's so good. i can tell you this is great that's good that's awesome man that's awesome okay okay so then you you definitely know the in and out to fortnite pretty much the the crafting the building <laughs> <laughs> yes yes I, and the running a oh. lot of running away that's what i do away. a lot of running away. Okay. Yep, build something and get out of there <laughs> <laughs> nice. let them sort it out nice okay that's cool that's cool Oh my god. I'm just so excited to get in this bus. Let's go, man. I want to I want to see if we can get some dubs right now. Let's what see. about you, man? How how are you on the game? Um I'm I'm not going to say I'm the best, but I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> oh, dude, I can't wait. Can't wait. Um I say we should go to the beach. You want to do that? Believer Beach. Okay. Believer right. Beach it is. Let's go. All right, awesome, man. Okay. So while we're uh while we're coasting down to Believer Beach, before we mm -hmm. uh, find out what's going to happen here. Um, I know you probably touched on it already, uh, but what would what is your uh, background? I mean, like, how did you decide to be in the field that you're in? You know what I mean? Like, like what, what made you want to be in it or do this? Like, how did you come across it? Oh, great question. Um, I, what made me want to get into doing films and television? Uh, I think it really is something that gets us all excited, and that is to tell stories things that really interest us and, and kind of gets us um, motivated to chase fantasies and, and those things that, oh man, I, I can tell you this. When I was young, I remember uh, hanging with my mom and uh, <laughs> we caught, we got a lot of things late. So we would watch shows that came out probably 10 to 15 years ago okay. or prior and, <laughs> and she'd pop them on and I didn't know they weren't current. So I come to school and like, oh my God, have you guys seen The Fresh Prince? <laughs> oh man, what an amazing show. Boy Meets World. Have you guys seen Boy Meets World? Oh, I feel like they're talking to me, you know? And uh, everyone's like, yeah, that show's like like 30 years old. It's so old. That, it, like those people are now adults. And, <laughs> and, uh, but <laughs> but it, it just really, I can say this. Um, what it made me feel was connected. It made me feel like I was heard, like I was seen. Okay. And it just, it really gave me someone to look forward to talking to. So when I came home, it, it, I felt like I was gonna hang out with Tori and Topanga. Oh, okay. Corey and Topanga. I just felt like we were gonna be buddies. And uh, I was gonna tell them about my day and, and give them an update. And wow. and I just love that, man. I love that. So I love that, that was a opportunity. Real, that was a real connection uh, piece for you then, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, just think about, think about just how much movies shape so much of not only our dialogue, but just the way we see certain things. If you see someone right now passed out mm -hmm. and um, there's a needle, like like the first thing I think is someone, oh, get a needle. 
Yeah, Read yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hit him in the chest. Get him in the chest. Both fiction. Both fiction reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Or someone's riding with you, right? And they take you somewhere to the dark alley. And it's like, hey, where are we going? You're not thinking about the dark alley. You're really thinking about, okay, I've seen this in scary movies. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing here, but this isn't this isn't a good look to be hanging out in dark alleys this way. Oh man. So I just got down just to let you know, but yeah, go on, back alleys. <laughs> <laughs> Dark alleys and getting down? I mean, hey. Oh my god. You know, yeah. what can you do? Yeah, they took oh. me out of the game, man, but hey, so... Okay, so then watching movies, it's helped mold people to be scared of dark alleys, and if someone's passed out, we need to get a needle. That's what we're gonna do. Got it. Oh, look at you, you got people on you. There you go, there you go. Man, look at that. That's some oh, good yeah. shooting, bro. You've been playing this longer. You know, I'm pretty sure you've been playing well, this longer. It, you know what it is? It's because I don't like the monkey around. Oh. You know? Oh. <laughs> okay, I see. I see. <laughs> look at you. Oh, oh, hey, you're celebrating with the bananas. <laughs> the bananas. That's too funny. That is really funny. That is so great. <laughs> no, so it, it is like that opportunity never crosses, like passes me, like how much of an opportunity it is to make films mm -hmm. and to be able to be like in a position to influence people um, and just hopefully find the movie or television show that they connect to. Okay. You know, it's like, oh, I remember watching that or Thank you for the being there for this. No, more than welcome, more than welcome. No, I get you, I get you. Um, I think, no, I, I totally feel that because uh, for me, it was all cartoons, man. Like I was, mm -hmm. I was in the Rugrats, I was, I was in the Rockers of Honor Life, you know, written in the I did a lot of that, you know? Um, oh, yeah. And, like, being an only child, man, like, those are my brothers and sisters, so I, I get it, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go hang yeah. out today, you know? And that, that's, yeah. that's what it was. That's what it was. Uh, you know, man, uh, speaking of that, you know, they're, they're remaking so many things. Have you, have you seen mm -hmm. something from, uh, from the past? that uh that you see is being remade and and you're like wow you know like i remember seeing that or like is that something that like man i should have remade it you know like i don't know well there's a, a few things i can't give out certain names because of contracts but i'll say this there were two franchises that were being rebooted five or six years ago um that i had an opportunity to read the the first draft of some of the scripts mm -hmm. and uh what happens is the, the draft to come in and then you'll have a few writers sort of go in and do a few rewrites and and add like uh, they call punching it up so you punch up the script okay because um it may have been the, the dialogue could be outdated or certain things that we no longer um you know will find necessary to talk about in certain films right so i had an opportunity to be in the running to direct uh one of those franchises that oh, was wow. going to be rebooted and reimagined yeah and and it's so wild man so i'm at the, I'm at the studio mm -hmm. And uh, I would go in and we'd have daily meetings. And the funny thing about this, man, the process is sometimes the meetings, you were, it had nothing to do with you. So you kind of would just dare <laughs> because these guys have been doing this for so long. Like, what am I going to tell? You know, he's written Forrest Gump for his day, as an example. I'm not going to like, oh, hey, man, uh, the first act really needs some help. It needs a lot of work there. Yeah. So you just kind of just dare given um, sort of the, the young guy's perspective. So, okay. so I'm, uh, <laughs> as you know, until you actually get up and running as a director, you're, you're sort of in the running as a director. So like a um, potential, so oh. you're still getting paid. I see. Okay. So, um, I was excited for that, man. And I think if we were to do something now going forward, I would love to do a star Wars reimagining or just something in the universe. I mean, Hey, they got solo coming out. Mm -hmm. Um, was it uh kenobi mm -hmm. the obi-wan oh, obi yeah. obi obi's coming out so i would love to do something in the universe um because i just love that universe i love you love star i love sci-fi nice okay. i love sci-fi i love star wars star wars is sci-fi you know it yeah, pretty yeah. much it, it is sci-fi <laughs> you know if you you think sci-fi star wars has to be in everyone's top five along with what the et Mm -hmm. um independence war day. of the worlds yeah. independence day yeah and you got it star wars is just up there i don't care what it is that you're talking if it's sci-fi and fantasy star wars star has wars. to be mentioned that's yes <laughs> that's yes <laughs> yeah. that's it cool, cool so cool. that'd be that'd be something i think about nice man okay so i mean since you know 
you go to all these meetings and and you produce mm-hmm. and you write and all that. So it'd be like what writing versus directing versus acting. Like which do you prefer? If you don't prefer all of them, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh wow, that's a good question. Well, what which one do I prefer? To be honest, I think it depends on the type of project. So okay. if I'm developing a Star Wars, oddly enough, I'd want to act in it before I direct because I love to be in the universe before I want to like create it. Mm-hmm. So I love to have a lightsaber and just, you know, be someone that has a mission like Luke or, or to help like uh, train or to be Darth Maul, uh, a villain with two lightsabers that, that are pink. Mm. Something that's, re- oh, stupid, that's him, you know. Yeah. I don't know what kind of name I have, but that'd be him like Zorg. Oh, it's Zorg, him, and he was born in da-da-da-da. Planet Kruganon, and he's the last <laughs> of his race. And uh, <laughs> so that'd be much more, that'd be a lot more fun to me than it would be to direct. Mm-hmm. But then when it's time to do like, let's say uh, the Skywalker origin story, now that'd be fun to, to also uh, direct. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun okay. because now I get to play, play in the field with certain actors. And if you can work with Ian McGregor, oh my God, you take it. Yeah, if Ewan man. McGregor's dead, you take it. Speaking of Ewan McGregor, that dude never ages, bro. He still looks the same, oh, man. Timeless. It's, it's timeless. He's... How are you going to tie that in with uh, with the original Obi-Wan from, like, the 76 movies? You know, to be like, yeah, he, he got this old. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to come up with some type of, like, uh, aging, like, uh, I don't know, storyline. Like, hey, well, because he fought this group of people. <laughs> Age, one of the things is to age you yeah <laughs> all hardcore man imagine that dude imagine imagine being young all your life or looking young all your life well just ask you and right you and mcgregor he knows he there you go all his life. oh man i'm getting this guy down oh got him down cool, cool nice cool. thanks man. nice thanks. shot so i mean yeah we, we've kind of we kind of like i mean everything that i want to ask you you kind of already dipped into but let's get more in depth man so like yes, uh so like talents ideas stories or anything that may have impacted you on the thought process for creating which i know you said that uh, Fortnite has helped you a little bit um but like has there mm-hmm. been anything else that has impacted you on on what you should have done maybe wanted to do or not do just because of situations yeah, well, I say this. Um, we started the company. Um, I have a lot of white label agreements with um, companies, and white label just means I work under a, a larger conglomerate. So I, I have, a, like, Sony would mm-hmm. be an example of that, right? Mm-hmm. So I would say Powell and Price is another company that we're starting, another production company, and uh, that's going to be sort of the the larger, higher budget range production arm. Okay. You know that we're going to be working on under. And that's uh, myself, uh, Latavius Powell. So it's it's going to be like a really, 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 really exciting thing. We're, we're in the production right now, pre-production for one of our films coming up. And I'd say what inspires me is as when we got together, mm-hmm. we were talking about the lack of representation. Um, diversity obviously is a really, really big topic, man. And, and it's something I'm very passionate about. Um, it's something that I, I think helps shape not only young young men and women's lives, but it just helps shape how we see each other as a society, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. being able to see your voice amplified, to feel heard, to feel seen. So producing projects like that, like, for example, even getting into sci-fi and having, you know, um, minority leads in sci-fi, having minority uh, leads in action, um, has helped helped me really really want to to do this that inspires me you know mm-hmm. inspires me more than anything to go okay cool this is an opportunity now so awesome. okay i would say that would be it. i would say that would be um uh, more of my inspiration is seeing people that look like me people that are um that may not be represented um have a voice and and have an opportunity not just to have a voice but have those voices amplified Oh, so okay. that that's just that inspires me every day, man. Wow, that's really awesome, man. So I mean, you you're literally just like looking out for for the community at that point. Like just making sure everybody is getting heard and being able to do what they can do. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I mean, I look at it like I think it's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. It's an opportunity for us to to not only let people understand how important it is, but to showcase why it's important. Oh man, they just took me down. We got 10th oh, wow. place. We got 10th place. 10th. Oh, 
Nice. Well, speaking of 10th place, uh, we're going to go ahead and check out the sponsor for the stream. So go ahead and uh, sit tight, check this out, and we'll be right back. guys and we're back so uh we got 10th place and right now we're waiting for the battle bus so we can start another round so sadly we have no dubs but hey we got top 10 so that was good that was really good considering you know we're getting some talking done you know <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right man um okay so let's see um really quickly uh how do you how do you feel about your role in life like you know, just looking back at yourself and things you've done and things you are doing and, and things that you hope to accomplish. Like, how do you feel about that role in, of life right now? Well, I would say this. Um, I think no matter where we are, we always feel like there's more that we left on the table, right? Something that we really should have approached differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the growth and, and it helps you sort of see the new path. And when I first started, I picked up a camera and there wasn't a lot of glamour to it at that time. You okay. know, we're talking 2001, 2002. Mm -hmm. I shot my first film, I was like 16. Um, and a lot, not a lot of people really, really supported it because when you come from areas that don't have a large influx of creative opportunities, job opportunities, it's very difficult to explain this is what you know, the end game is, this is what this looks like. There's no one, there's no comp. And without a comp, it's very, very hard, man. And so I would say looking back, there's a lot of things that I wish that I would have done to approach that, that narrative a lot, you know, a lot more mm -hmm. that would have helped me see a, a different route because I was so hell bent on making sure everyone saw the importance of what I wanted to do mm -hmm. that I didn't actually focus on what I wanted to do. Like I was making movies to prove I can make a movie and not making a movie to tell a story, you know? Oh, okay. All right. So you were focused you on finishing the, the product just because you could be like, I did this as a yes. post. Okay. See, yeah. look, yeah. mom, it works. <laughs> See, you told me I wouldn't finish. Look, look, friends, it, it, look, here it is. And yeah, it's just me walking around you know, with a, a, a fake plastic gun shooting people, but look at that. Look, see, I told you this would work. And I would approach that a lot differently now because that need for approval, mm -hmm. as, as I've gotten older, not only has that, you know, shown out to be like completely irrelevant, but it has borne out, it has borne out, um, I'm sorry, hello. <laughs> The killing right, okay. sky in the fire. It is born out uh, to see more of that. You know what? That never is the route to go because people that doubt you, they're not doubting you because they don't believe. They're doubting you because they don't believe in themselves. Oh, so it's very important to like take that lesson. And, and it took me a long time to learn that lesson because I down. still spend a, a good majority of my life. All right, I'm coming. Okay. A good majority of my life still appeasing and appealing to that crowd okay you know wow okay so wow that's crazy man like to actually like to to think about like the reason like that drive happened was just because you said i couldn't so i'm going to yes wow yes that is hardcore man like yeah <laughs> that's like a lot that's like what a bunch of like rock music is made out of you know what i mean <laughs> like that energy bro <laughs> <laughs> and I love rock, man. Sorry for the late. I love rock. I love, I love that. And again, you're right because 
great music, mm -hmm. even like soul, R&B, all the great music was bred from this feeling of not being heard and, you know, how can we make a change? Nice shot. Like, how can we make a change? Mm -hmm. I just have a lot of health. How can we make change in our community? And that's what, I mean, listen to Ray Charles, you know? Mm -hmm. Hard times, Georgia on my mind. Um, you know, uh, These Arms of Mine, just, it, just any song, Al Green, let's stay together. All the music that we love. I mean, obviously Pink Floyd and and uh, Led Zeppelin, right. like all the, 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 the bands that we just love and respect. It, it came from, let's not, it wasn't about let's make money. Mm -hmm. It was about let's, let's again, rage against this machine and really point a lens on society, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, man, that, that's, that's what I think about um, looking back on this particular role that I'm in now. And um, you know, not only things I would do differently, but just, just being able to see the growth, seeing um, what I've learned and what I've been able to apply. It's just been a blessing. Wow, man. Yeah, no, it, it definitely sounds like a, a, a journey, man. I mean, because I know me growing up as a kid, you know, like the first time you ever play with Legos, right? It's it's like, okay, cool. I put them together. But then the first time you mm -hmm. built something with Legos, you're like, dude, I did this. And yeah. Then, and then like that grows into something bigger and it gives you that drive and ambition to do more. You know what I mean? Uh, like in yeah. your case, it was with the camera. You know what I mean? Like you had the camera and you're like, okay, I did this. And then like, look at you now, like you, you're making full features and stuff like that, you know? So that's, yeah. that's pretty crazy, dude. That that's 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 uh, that's a great um, I guess lesson to learn or to go through in life. You know, is just realizing all the stuff you yeah. overcome. You know, it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't seem like it in the time. It really doesn't. I can tell you, man. That's been there were times when we'd be filming and we'd be on set, and uh, <laughs> like I remember this one time I had cast um, from a photo. Uh, I just wanted to cast a, a, a female lead. And I said, you know what? I don't care. We didn't get a lot of submissions because it was it was free, copy and credit only. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? We have two people. There's a guy and a girl. We're casting the girl. And um, and she came to set. I didn't look at the resume, real anything. It was just, you know what? No, I want a woman to lead this. It's going to happen. So she came to the set. And um, this is how I'm just showing you. Like, you don't know what you do. And you just kind of let things move. Right. So she came to set. And she was like, hey, I'm so happy to be. I said, oh, you know, we're happy to have you. Thank you for, you know, taking the role. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, I just got to let you know right now, I can't see. And I was like, oh, wow, did okay. something happen? She's like, no, 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 I can't see. I'm okay. blind. Wow. Okay. And I was like, oh, she's like, this is the first role, and you're the only person to ever cast me. I've wow. never been cast. And and I'm, I can't tell you what this means to me. And I was just like, oh you know like, you know like oh, wow okay um i said okay well we'll work through it we'll just we'll do the um the the listening part we'll kind of have people you know cue you where to be and if you need help with marks and i mean i said okay well i hate to say this but i'm also deaf wow i said okay 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 well we got a lot to work with we got a lot to work with let's let's all get together and let's figure this out so yeah, it, it was the weirdest thing, man. And um, and the movie that she was in, by the way, is Plastic Films. If you want to uh, look up her name, I, I definitely have the credit I'll go through. But it was the craziest thing to just have that experience because you just don't know what what you do and how it affects people. And something that just seemed like, you know, OK, this is a, a good intention. Mm -hmm. it, it was such an impactful moment for me. I mean, she was just a talented actress. But for me, it just showed me that so so much um can happen when you you give people an opportunity because she was great wow okay yeah well i mean i'm pretty sure that that boosted her confidence in a lot of things uh that she pursued further in career man i mean just because you gave her the chance to shine or to do what she she had dreamt of doing you know what i mean yeah and, and then like you to even have to work with someone uh and that capability you know what i mean like that that is pretty cool man that's awesome yeah and you learn so much too, because I know just in case, I don't know, you know, it's, it's look, I always say we're, you're, you're not educated until you are as far as on things that you don't know about. It's just how we all are, we learn. Mm -hmm. So I didn't understand like when someone says like uh, blind or deaf, I immediately go to the far end of the spectrum. So there's different spectrums. Right. So you can have the, uh, there's a piece that they connect to the ear and to, I think, 
it's, it's so it's so I don't want to misspeak in this, but what she had was something that connected to her brain, essentially, mm-hmm. that allowed her access to hear certain um, so it was phonetic like a, sounds, but not actual words. So it was like a, a, a um, somewhat like an advanced hearing aid. Like it was enough to give her yes. assistance, but like, yeah, OK, OK, cool. So so, you know, in this case, what do you mean by, you know, how, how was that? It? So it, it's just working around that. And I actually had a kid that I dealt with at a camp mm-hmm. who also had something similar, um, different spectrums. It's just like anything else. There's always different spectrums that we fall under mm-hmm. um, when it comes to certain things, you know, like, um, so it, it, it's just, it was very interesting, man, just to, to have that experience. And I was so, so humble, you know, mm-hmm. just to, that she allowed herself to, to come to work and share her talents with us. That's cool, man. That's really great, dude. Because I mean, it's all about inspiration and helping people, dude. You know, like just just making sure that that uh, you can guide people in the right direction or showing them that they can do more than what they thought they could. You know, like that's that's pretty amazing. Uh oh, good shot at. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. Oh my god. Playing Fortnite and talking feelings, yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I said that's such a blessing. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> such a blessing. This guy's down. I just shot this guy. It's such a blessing. <laughs> no, man, that's cool. Okay, so um, any advice that you may have for anyone, like uh, any possible do's or don'ts mm-hmm. if they're on the same journey or are trying to accomplish any one of their goals? Yeah, you know what? And first off, I'd say you are such an inspiration. You know, X7, X Ellis, just your gaming channel. Thank you. Uh, the way you interact with the community. I've been able, fortunate enough to see and be a part of some of the streams and to be able to watch and see your growth and, and to see, you know, what you bring, you know, not only to the digital space, but just to the creative space, man. It's just been, it's been all inspiring to watch. So, you know, obviously, I just want to tell you, that I'm watching, keep keep it up. It's really great to watch and see. Oh, thank you, man. Thank um, you so much. No, yeah, I, it really is. And I, I think that would be where I would go, just following following your passion. Mm-hmm. The, the only don'ts, I'd say, is when you doubt yourself and doubt the plan, mm-hmm. because there is no plan. You know, there is nothing set in stone. Like, whatever happens for you is, is, is so in your path and your route tree that you can't have a plan for it and you can't get assistance with it because it's for you. Your journey is for you. So there's been many times where I'd sit back and wonder what's my next film until I stop wondering. I realize my next film is whatever I write and it's whatever I put my, my heart and soul into. So that's always been my next film. Nice. Like, um, and I've always found funding for it. Like I've never actually <laughs> not found funding or, or finance and or people to be a part of a project mm-hmm. that I was been passionate about. Wow. This never happened. So it's just God energy. It's it's um, you know, faith in yourself, belief in in those around you and having a great support system. So I, I think that would be my advice. Find your support system, find your core, mm-hmm. work on your core and protect it. Never, ever, ever think that something is happening to you and there's no reason. There's always a reason. Take a pause take a breath and if something's not happening it's probably because you need to slow up and reevaluate because that thing you think you really want may not be something you need at all and okay. it, it would have stunned me so many times so many movies would have stopped because i thought i wanted that person i wanted that to happen like i would have been doing a, a sci-fi channel movie about gorilla shark and i would have thought that's what i wanted but i'm not passionate about gorilla shark Right. And for those who are passionate about Gorilla Shark, that would be for them, but not for me because it doesn't fit into what I wanted to do at the time. You see, so I couldn't put my heart and soul into it. Wow, man. See, I well, that makes a lot of sense, you know, uh, just because, I mean, you're right. You know, uh, there's so, so many things that do happen in life, that does happen in life. And then, like, you, you try to think about, like, well, why? But it, it's because it's happening. Like, that's just what's supposed to happen. Um, and then, like, the, everything happens for a reason. We got someone over here. Just like this uh, reason over here is we found this guy. Oh, got him 30 and down. Nice. Down. Nice. 
Look at that, man. Look at that teamwork, bro. Nice shot. Yeah, thanks, man. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna met up here. I think we may have a chance of uh, getting this dub here. Thank you for that. Heck yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's really good, man. I, uh, that's some really well-spoken advice and, and, like, just words of wisdom, man. I mean, obviously, you have been through a lot. I mean, enough to, to accomplish these thoughts or to to come up on, on these reasonings, you know? Which is really good mm -hmm. because uh, that just shows growth, man. It, 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 it definitely comes across as, like, you've been through some stuff and you learned and, and you just keep going through the motions, man. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So, uh, I, I, we kind of got the answer to this earlier, <laughs> but how did you discover Fortnite? Like, I understand, like, the pandemic we went through, which is crazy and still are going through. Um, you had said you had picked it up then, but I mean, like, how, how did you discover it? Was it just something that you just came across or? Well, I got put onto it by a good friend. Okay. Um, and it was weird because I, I literally remember saying, I would never play this game. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was okay. like, I never, I would never play that game. No, like, I don't know. I was so, I was so adamant about, it. no, I would never play that game. <laughs> like you would catch me doing any, I would read the pogo stick before I play that game. I was so into it. Like, uh, my, my denial for it. And mm -hmm. I think part of me probably saw that if I did play it, <laughs> that I might get addicted. And, and that has kind of bore out to be more of a truth. Than wow. me not wanting to play. <laughs> so we, you are addicted to Fortnite. Okay. <laughs> that 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 will be a positive addiction. Yes, I I can confirm that I play this an insanely amount of time. Nice. Uh, definitely an unhealthy amount of time in a day. <laughs> Hey, man. It's, it's dedicated to this game. <laughs> but you said it also helps your thought process. So you know what? I don't think it's a bad thing. You know what I mean? Like I think that's no. that's actually pretty cool. You know, because uh, oh, sure. uh, video games that, you know, in, in just some aspects, a, a lot of people see a lot of negative context to it. But uh, at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, people that play video games more frequently uh, do have a lot of hand-eye coordination that is better. A lot of cognitive um, responses uh, faster mm -hmm. than most people. And it does help the thought process, man. I, I, can, I can definitely say that there's been times where... I've been stuck in situations and it's like, I didn't know what to do, man. And all I do is play video games and it helped me, uh, you know, pan out or, or decide what I'm going to do, you know? So I don't think there's bad oh, people can, make them think, think they are. Completely agree. My favorite game, um, is final fantasy 10 oh, and, nice. uh, you know, uh, shout out to my dad. He, he passed recently RIP, but he bought me that game. Oh, okay. And, uh, I never forget it, man. It was the first time someone had ever bought me something for Christmas and something I really wanted like this, mm -hmm. where I, you know, it was so expensive and I just couldn't, I was like, oh man, I really want that game. And I remember playing it and I, I never, I didn't put it down because I felt like that the game makers was speaking specifically to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it it still sticks with me now and it helped me get through so many hard times. And now it even, you know, obviously as we go, it, it's still, it's still a part of me, man. It's still such a part of me. Um, even today, when I think about that game. So no, I'm with you. They do so much more than just distract you or, or kill time. It's, it is such, um, you know, it is, it is, it really helps you. It helps you sort of center yourself. It helps you stay grounded. Mm -hmm. oh, you know, because well, it's a form of storytelling. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally get you. And I mean, that definitely goes on the process with filmmaking, right? I mean, it's a form of storytelling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, I mean, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about your father, man. Like, honestly, condolences. Um, it's, Thank you. It's, it's never easy losing somebody, especially uh, with these all recent events that are going on, man. But, Another uh, thank you. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. So real quick, uh, what 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 about um possible gigs that you didn't get and you wanted to book? Well, <laughs> I can name a few of those projects that I was in holding for, um, <laughs> that I was in holding for that obviously they went in a different direction, but I think for the better direction because whenever I see the end game, the end result of the projects, mm -hmm. they definitely turned out, you know 
better than I can anticipate. And I was like, they got the right guy for the job and the right girl for the job. Nice. So, so, uh, I mean, like any specifics though, like any, like, you know, one thing you could probably mention that you won't get in trouble for. <laughs> oh, one second. Oh yeah. You got somebody on you. Sorry. Oh, she got me down, but she's right there. Okay. And I'm down. Dude, we got fourth place. Awesome. Oh, I killed her, but yeah. yeah. That storm, that storm, man. Got storm us. got us. Fourth, storm. great job. Oh, yeah, fourth. Okay. Yeah, I, you know what? Um, Let me see if there's something that I can mention that, gosh, I don't know, man. Like, it's it's so hard. Like, it's so many so many movies that I, they're, they're really big. So <laughs> um, let's just, I just say this. Uh, any kind of fantasy movie you can think of, I've been in the running for, and oh, okay. that goes for any recent, recent, huge esque films that you can imagine. Nice. Um, you know, so that I, I will say that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well it's, it's very difficult, man, because once you, especially once you don't get it, it it's more like you don't know what was told to someone else. Mm -hmm. So you have no clue what those contract negotiations were like. Oh, man. Yeah, you know. I'm pretty sure that's very uh, nerve-wracking. They could be like, hey, you're the only one to ever read this script. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, hold on. <laughs> yeah, no, I got you. I got you. All right, uh, guys. Uh, well, real quick. So that would be that. That would be the part. I will say this, that uh, we're really hoping that this project we're working on now, mm -hmm. uh, Heart Matter with Powell and Price and uh, co-production with Baby Monster, has a really, really big name. And um, we're talking to huge names. You know, names that are comparables to the Bruce Willis's and comparable to the Mel Gibson's. Ooh, nice. So we're very hopeful uh, that once we're able to release that information, we can revisit this conversation <laughs> and I can I can tell you exactly what's going on. Oh, man. So we, we're going to have to have you on a second time to get those fillers, man. But as far as people I've worked with now, uh -huh. um, and I don't know if your mic is still on or not. No, yeah, it's on. Hello? Can you hear okay. me? Okay. I think still I may have lost you. Is the mic still on? Hello, hello. Hello. Testing, testing. Is the mic still on? It's on now. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, as far as some of the, the people I've worked with now, I've worked with obviously, you know, Tori Hart, Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. uh, Eamon Joseph, The Snowfall, I mean, Brian Hooks, and Eve Show, Eve, uh, Gosh, man, Omarion. Mm -hmm. um, I can just—it's just, it's just it, so many talented people. I've been blessed to to be able to to work with. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. It's just so much, man. Like, uh, and most of the time, I'm working with people who, you know, Mike Epps, Cat Williams, Snoop Dogg. Um, most of the times, I'm working with them. It's sometimes a consulting base. Sometimes it's piecing together a project, packaging helping to book them in, in a show, a movie, or help to sort of like, again, structure something that's already in production. Okay. Um, so I've, I've done so much as far as like names that you can think of in so many different capacities. It's, that's why I'm, I'm at where I'm at now. So it's really one of those, those things where um, it's not one particular project I can point to, it's multiple and most of those, uh, most of them, given the nature of how big they are, is, is sometime on a confidentiality basis because, again, you know, certain things are being um, utilized in negotiations. So, right, right, right. It, it so helps. Yeah, you, yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to give away too much info. Okay, man. Can't give away too much info. Like, hey, if you know, <laughs> if I tell you where we shot that, that may change um, the whole dynamic. A, a, a whole dynamic of of sweet home alabama <laughs> oh man yeah i got you I wait got you. a minute <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of sweet home alabama uh let's go ahead and take a look at our sponsor which is raise energy uh go ahead and check them out at ripsports.com i'm gonna go ahead and play a promo for you and we'll be right back use coupon code x7 x ellis at repsports.com to save 15 percent off your purchase Demand more raids.
And we're back, and I am on the floor, and I'm about to get shot. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, so we got baby monsters still out there surviving. My card is out in the open. Okay, so yeah, man. Um, so you've just been working with big names, doing everything you can. That's crazy. Um, so uh, the community and how you feel that it impacts you or if you impacted the community, either like hometown or you know just at places you travel do you feel mm -hmm. that you've had an impact on them or they've had an impact on you as far as uh any type of projects or anything that you try to have filmed or have utilized that place for um yeah I, you know what i've been filming a lot in the rgv the rio grande valley uh it's pretty much like southern texas um I would say that that community has embraced me, has embraced my company, has embraced my producing partners and productions, you know, from Steve Pena in Alton, Texas, to McAllen, Texas, to Edinburgh, okay. Harlingen. Wow. Uh, they've supported, they've just supported, um, you know, the vision and, and, and it's just been so great, man. I can tell you this. So I speak at some of the schools down in the RGV, right? And, and I remember distinctly having some students at the end of, of some of my uh, talks come up and ask, how can I get involved? And, you know, my, I thought that the best I could do was, was sort of work in, in retail or, or just work in, in the food and service, food and beverage services. And, and um, I was like, no. And they said, from listening to you and the people you brought out, I want to go to Austin. I don't want to go to film school. I want to go and, and be a musician. I want to tailor clothes. I want to... Wow. You know, I just want, I want to be in space and, and SpaceX is there now. So it's so many things, yeah, yeah. right? It's so <laughs> much to see that imagination just come to life. Oh yeah. Right. To see, see that come to life. So it's been so great, man. Like, like to, to be able to see that and to, to know that, that just being around good energy like that, opening so many young minds and having an opportunity, um, to, to be told afterwards, hey, thank you so much just for being there and just for, like I watched your movie, I watched Almost Amazing, I watched Wrong Place, Wrong Time, which is out now on all platforms, iTunes and, and, and you know, Voodoo, Hulu, DirecTV. Nice. It's out and it's like, oh, I saw that movie and I can't believe you shot it here. You know, nice. <laughs> you shot that here. <laughs> so I saw the Cine Ray. I saw that, that's so crazy because I didn't think movies would be in my town yeah um so that that part is it never gets old and it's something i never take for granted man because it's the support and the love and the kindness and just the openness to the willingness to help mm -hmm. and the willingness to again for us to be on one accord it is it, never unnoticed and it's always appreciated wow man that that's that's crazy dude like honestly like that that is a trip you know to really think about hey man like this was shot here you know and like yeah. i'm from here you know what i mean like just that just that um that's just such like a, a shock you know what i mean like for people to be like nah -uh, man you you don't you don't live there yeah i do that movie was shot there you know it's crazy so amazing and then that impact too as well with with all the students that like not even movies man but like they want to do other things that they probably never thought like you said with the with the clothing clothing design you know music stuff mm -hmm. like that that is so great and then even at that that could be incorporated into movies because they could be making the costumes for actors one day or they they could be making the soundtrack exactly. for for them you know exactly that's exactly. so crazy man everything just ties in together like that and that's so great i like that yeah yeah and it takes the like, teachers being open to having us come and speak mm -hmm. teachers being open to having like some the programs that we just take for granted and like the arts Mm -hmm. uh, black box theater, theater practicum, productions and stage plays and things that you just go, okay, um, yeah, do we really need them? The pandemic is here and mm -hmm. do we really want that? But just having access to being able to expand the mind for young minds, especially, mm -hmm. it, it goes so far, man. It's, it's not even about like um, a particular thing. It's about the idea that there are no limits. And that's something that, um, you know, that takes you to become an Elon Musk, you know, to, to sort of strive for that, mm -hmm. to strive to, to make things that we all not only benefit from, but we all can enjoy um, art that we all can consume and, and, and help shape our lives, music that we can consume. So 
I, I'm so I'm such a big proponent of that. I'm yeah. so grateful that RGB allowed us that opportunity. Yeah, and it's also great too because like no matter what language you speak or where you're from, I mean like art is just that universal language, man. Like oh, yeah. everybody's yeah. gonna get into that, you know? Um, yeah. And like that that's one thing that I think the the community or a lot of people miss out on is, is uh, the togetherness that just a simple piece of art or a film or music can bring together with people. And uh, I really feel like we got disconnected because obviously the um, the uh, what is it, the pandemic that's been going yeah, the on. The pandemic, yeah. yeah. And, and I feel like everybody's going to get scared to even talk to people again. Uh, I mean, of course, person to person, you know what I mean? But we, like, I feel uh, as long as we still have that language that we can share with each other, I mean, there's, there's still hope for connections, you know? Yeah. Well, I say this, and this is why it's so great like as life goes on, a lot of things will bear themselves out mm -hmm. and the truth will reveal itself, right? Okay, during the pandemic, most of, of us around the world and you know, in the country, in America, we spend a lot of our time watching Netflix, Amazon, mm -hmm. Hulu, Disney Plus, catching up on The Mandalorian, Queen's Gambit, watching all Ro of these shows. Yeah, watching Roku. <laughs> watching Roku, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and again, Roku was just, like that's what people from the areas that I mostly speak to mm -hmm. though that's uh, a platform that connects with them most because you can find it it's more easily accessible than a lot of the pay subscription on demand sites right so you know my mom has it you know what I mean and and um, I have it so just all these type of platforms that way it just shows you like the importance because as we were dealing with this horrific disease we found solace in finding common shows that we can all connect to, mm -hmm. you know, finding uh, finding something that we, oh, the Queen's Gambit, did you watch that? And that helped us become actually more connected in our sort of disconnect, if that makes sense. But it just shows you the importance of the arts. Like we did not seek our worser selves in things that, that became sort of um, passerby activities, you know, as far as like, uh, bench drinking or, or whatever it may be. We, we sunk our teeth into the creative arts. People got more inventive. Right. They did more on the social media. They did more on, on their platforms. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, they, they connected more through Zoom and through, through things that were just like tools that we didn't access or utilize as much because um, there wasn't really this demand right. or this necessity from us, right? Uh, seemingly. And that's something that again it just shows you the truth will bear out that that's how much creativity helped not only get us through um this hard time but helped us stay connected and that was so important right and way then, way more important than anything else uh and, tangible as far as uh items yeah go on, right. sorry. no no and with and with that um since you are in the in the business man and, and you seem to be on that spectrum or on that side of it uh how do you how did you feel or what were your thoughts when um you know, of course, the pandemic was going on that uh, everything went straight on demand or, or, you know, was pretty much accessible without uh, bringing in the normal income that it usually does. You know what I mean? Like, like movies were coming straight to HBO and like other places were like, oh, you can get them here before you see them in a theater, which I understand we couldn't go to a theater. But how, how do you think that impacted movie uh, makers or creators? You know what I mean? Considering that it wasn't the same turnout that it normally would have been. Well... You know what's so funny, man? I think what's odd about it is it changed our industry forever, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like with the theaters, I, I try to be specific, especially in the field of what I've, what, you know, what I'm closely affected by. So when I went to go sell a film, mm -hmm. um, it usually was certain platforms that you could try to reach out to and and say hey i have a title you take it to market you you know reach out and say hey roku i have a, a title are you interested and roku would say yeah we're interested in in titles that you may have but we want to you know see what it's about does it fit like what our consumers are consuming at the moment and and then we can we can talk about offers and we can talk about how we can reach as many eyeballs as possible mm -hmm. right now, beforehand, that may have been actually a more difficult conversation to, to have access to a, a Roku than it was uh, now, than it is now. Okay. And okay. That's, that's what's so interesting because that's a big change. Mm -hmm. 
And since that is such a huge change, that now changes what I see as a potential revenue stream for something that may have been a more difficult conversation, right? A, a difficult reach out that is now more accessible because Roku has, has seen, um, you know, the value in allowing certain, certain voices to be heard in different ways because you couldn't meet people in person, for example. You couldn't just have a meeting in France only to sell your project. So you had to take a Zoom call. So now where the head of acquisitions mm -hmm. may not have taken a Zoom call, he's not taking a Zoom call because that's okay. normalized now, you see? Right. So, that's, so that's a really great change. And it's great for people who may not have been um, allowed that opportunity mm -hmm. just because, again, why would you, you know, pick up a phone call randomly, like unsolicited calls? Right. Um, <laughs> so now that's a, that's a, yeah, right. Oh, someone's called <laughs> it's, all, <laughs> about it's, a, it's all like, a, Hey, uh, so uh, I'm going to talk to you about your car's uh, insurance. It's like, dude, no, like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So that has been a bit changed. And I believe that just like with radio, which is still around and they said that would be the death of it with, you know, the invention of MP3 iPods and iTunes and et cetera, mm -hmm. how we still listen and consume, you know, radio, mm -hmm. uh, broadcasts. You, this is an experience, and and there's always space to to grow. The theater is, is an experience, you know. I, I want to take my girlfriend out and my significant other out for a night on the town more so than I'm really interested in the film. Like sometimes we're just there to have a good time and make fun of the film, and have fun with the film than we are to technically see the film. No, no, <laughs> like yeah, where yeah. we could we could watch it at home, but I'd rather watch. You know, um, uh, you know, a big budget film that's meant to have giant creatures flying all over the place in the theaters. Right. Not because I can't watch it at home, but it's just what I prefer. It's just my preference. Right. So it's all back to preference, man. So, but, yeah. But I mean, honestly, like, I, I mean, me personally, I feel like like there was a lot of pros and cons, uh, but I do feel that the industry itself did get to find itself and recreate itself if that makes sense uh like you just yeah. said you know yeah um which is good because it does open up a lot more opportunity and a lot more doors for a lot of people who probably didn't have that chance or people who thought like you know this wasn't ever going to be possible you know and uh um, yeah that's really cool because at, at the end of the day you know now now it's just like hey let's see what we can do you know oh hold on I'm trying to get this person they're jumping, and I'm dead. Yeah, they got all two right, cool. snipers. <laughs> two snipers. Oh, man, I'm dead. Okay, cool. We got 13th place. That's all right. <sighs> okay, man. Uh, so real quick, um, I know you say you like sci-fi and that you would love to write or direct anything to do with Star Wars or anything like that in that universe. Um, uh -huh. But with, you know, just assuming, uh, just because, you know, you talked about the, the Fresh Princes and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure you saw some of the stuff I saw growing up. Um, like, you know, you got your Starship Troopers, you, you got, of course, the Star Wars, of course, you got, um, well, Pulp Fiction came out a little bit later, but still, the whole point is, movies yeah. from that side, um, what would be, I guess, a film that you believe that you would be great at reimagining? Like, if you could take any movie right and title and make it uh -huh. your own, what would you do? Like, what movie would that be? And why? <laughs> oh my God, that's a great question. You know, it's it's really weird. Um, my favorite my favorite movie is Legends of the Fall, okay. and my third favorite film is Across the Universe, and my fourth favorite is Love and Basketball. Okay. So in some odd way, I would like to do. I would love to reimagine Legends of the Fall. Mm -hmm. Um. As, as sort of like, oh God, I don't know how to put it. I would love to reimagine a movie like Legends of the Fall. Okay. You know, like bring it back because, because yeah, I'm trying to say this in the right way because it's kind of an odd way. I almost want to do it the same way, <laughs> okay. but I want to do it again because how interesting would it be to see Legends of the Fall? I do a movie that may be more familiar to your audience, like Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pulp Fiction we all know and love. Imagine right. trying to shoot that now and who would be John Travolta? Who would oh, be Samuel man. Jackson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, like not back in the in the seventies and eighties, no, now. So it's set in this time frame and it's reimagined as in now. So who's playing these roles? Right. Um, these iconic roles. Yeah. Man. And not only that, how
how would you, the challenge would be, how do you keep it fresh, but also keep it current? See, that's the thing. So if you do it in the 80s and 70s, you can still cheat. You can still say stuff that, you know, oh, well, that was back in the 70s. I'm talking now. Oh my where God. there's certain okay. things you can't say, things you can't do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd like totally uh, up to date everything. Up and... to date it. That's wow. a challenge. That'd be a challenge. Okay. okay. Right? How do you make that funny? <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how do you, how do you make it relatable? Scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. I mean, because it's like what uh, I think recently the biggest film that I remember seeing, I was like, you know, they did an all right job. But now that you say what you just said, it makes me rethink about it uh, with It, you know what I mean? It was still set in a period piece. It's still set in a period, yeah. yeah. So it was like really hard to even be like, wow, this is a really good reimagining when technically it's all the same thing. It's just new actors playing roles. New yeah. actors, yeah. yeah. And, and wow, that makes a lot of sense. See, that makes you think now, you know what I mean? Like, it's just so crazy. Um, but okay, so real quick, who would be Samuel Jackson in Pulp Fiction now? You know what I mean? Oh, sorry. Hold on. Oh, I'm, I'm getting shot at and I have no weapons. Oh my god. Oh, found one. Can I still survive this? Yes, I can. All right. <laughs> yeah, man, awesome man. job, man. Thank you. Thank you. I got a stellar shooter legacy update. That's pretty cool. I don't know what that was for, nice. but cool. <laughs> Um, no clue. Cool. <laughs> no, I don't know who would play Sam now. I mean, there's so many people. Mark Phillips from RDC World. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he's he'd be interesting. Would it be like Little Rail? You th what, um, what about what about uh, is his name Elba? Elba, uh, Ed, the one that came out in uh, oh Idris. Yeah, it just you just it just Elba. Yeah, from yes, that'd be a great one. <laughs> That's a great one, actually. Yeah. See, uh, but see how much you can have so much fun with that. Yeah, and, and then, then and then uh, Ewan Travolta's role. You and McGregor. You and McGregor. <laughs> oh my God. You and McGregor. It just Elba. Done. Yeah, done. You're not. I'm there already. Yeah. Done. That's it. That's it. But what I'm, about? I don't, I don't care what the plot is. I'm there. It doesn't even matter. I'm there. <laughs> what about, done. What about Bruce Willis though? Change him out with The Rock or what? <laughs> oh, you know what'd be funny? Bruce had to remain Bruce. Oh, Bruce, Bruce is still Bruce. <laughs> Bruce is still Bruce. <laughs> Doing the same role at a different time. <laughs> oh, Mr. Wallace would have to be like, who, who would be Wallace? Who would be like oh, Marcellus? Man. Oh, that's so hard because that guy was just a great uh, actor, man. That yeah, guy Vin Reigns. Vin Reigns. Okay, Vin so. Vin Reigns. Oh, who would that be? I don't know. That's a good one. I mean, maybe Michael Jai White, maybe? I don't know. Just because I. I don't know. I don't know. Because he was there like for a minute, you know what I mean? Like he wasn't like in the main movie like the whole time. He was talked about, but like as far as seeing him, uh, okay, I, I this may know. be a stretch. Maybe someone like Ken Jeong, like Ooh. you'd have to change it up so all the way, right? Like right. I would go with, like Ken Jeong or like maybe even a woman, Michelle Yeoh or, or or you know someone like really switch it up a bit. Okay. Really switch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. You know who has great comedic time and Lucy Liu, Lucky Number Seven. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a great film. Um, she she surprised me in that one. I didn't think she she had it in her like that, but that that's what made it great. Great comedic timing. So yeah, I can see that Lucy Liu and just really just giving us a chance to, to you know expand that horizon there. But it's already crazy because Pulp Fiction was was such a, a diverse and great you know greatly written script. That's to say the least. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to even try to think about improvements or changes because it was so ahead of its time. Right, no, yeah, I, I totally agree, I totally agree. But to me, um, I don't think that movie can ever be touched, man. Even if, even if someone, even if someone were to be like, you know what, I think we can redo this. It's like, okay, well, I mean, sure. But at the end of the day, I, I really don't think it could really be touched, man. I, I think that movie is better where it's at, you know? I agree, I agree, I agree. But it's still fun. It's still fun because you just never know, I mean, Think about it like this, and this is something I always thought about. What if a director, my favorite director is James Cameron. Okay. What if James Cameron came up and he's like, you know what, um, Justin, somehow I found your number uh, <laughs> yeah, James, on this napkin. You're listening, James. <laughs> Find his number. Yeah. X7, X Ellis, uh -huh. I found you on this gaming channel I love to watch with yeah. my kids, and they love Fortnite. Mm -hmm. um, I heard you talking, and I was so inspired to just reach out to you. I really want you to reimagine the abyss. 
Oh. And and I just, you know what? I, I just never got a chance to see what someone that, you know, didn't grow up around it, blah, 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 would do with it. So I just want to see what you would do with it. And you know what? I have Quentin here. Quentin is going to come, <laughs> and he wants you to do Pulp Fiction as his last film. He doesn't want to do any more films. He's tired of films at this point. He's saying he wants to go out on top, but he wants you as his, his last moment of filmmaking prowess is to say, go out and make Pulp Fiction the reimagined version for him. Because wow. it's something that he's passionate about seeing. Yeah. What do you say to that? Dude, like, it's his, you know. You can't say no. You're going to be like, okay. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. You don't say no to that. <laughs> James Karen and Tarantino wants you to redo Pulp Fiction. You got you to gotta do it. <laughs> wow. You got to do it. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, th th that's a spot that you just can't say no to, yeah. I mean, it, come on. <laughs> like, if you say no, then what's going to happen? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Well, something may explode, you know, like heads, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. It just won't, you won't be the same, I can tell you that. You go to McDonald's and it's a Royale <laughs> with cheese on a quarter pounder anymore. <laughs> you know, Everything's so. different. Everything is different. Oh, I hear wolves. Uh, I hear wolves. Do you see any wolves anywhere? Oh, I see them. Never mind. They're on fire. The wolves yeah, are on fire. Yeah, I, I, I tried to set that house on fire, you know? Uh-huh. I tried on fire. to set it on fire. Oh, thanks <laughs> nice. for that. Yeah. Wow, man, we're doing pretty good. We got 34 on the map, man. Let's go. Let's see if we can finish awesome. this out. This will probably be the last round. Uh, so um, there is no more questions for Mr. Price, but hey, we're still hanging and playing. So let's see what's going on. So we get this dub before the end of the end of the, the show. Oh, I Thank found yeah. a lot of gold. I found a lot of gold, man. Oh yeah, you need it. They they really are scarce with the gold. <laughs> they yep. treat the money like money here. <laughs> <laughs> a, you can't have more than like ten gold. This on is you. real. Like wow, <laughs> you guys are, are taking this serious. You guys are something else with this gold. You something else with this gold. Yes, well, I have a question. I have a question for you. I mean, you know, uh -huh. first off, again, thank you for the opportunity, man, just to, to be able to speak with you. But I have a question. Uh, as you're, you know, playing playing Fortnite and, and mm -hmm. you know, doing everything that you're doing with your channels, what exactly would you love to see, um, you know, as you go forward? Would you like to reach out more to the community? Like, what has been your favorite part um, about this? Okay, so honestly, uh, yeah, man. <laughs> That is that's a really good question. I was just talking about this earlier too. Um, so what's going on is is uh, I just started this for fun, man. And and with the fun, um, I, I didn't expect to, to be where I'm at now at this point. But uh, I did like that when I would play a lot of people that I knew personally or just random people who would join the stream to watch. Uh, they would always give me the feedback of like, hey man, you know, you're a lot more comfortable to watch or to you know hang with you know virtually online because you interact and you talk and sometimes i just want to be heard and i'll listen you know what i mean um mm -hmm. so like in, in the whole retrospect of it um i would love to just reach out to communities and just make sure that people have a voice that that can be heard and that uh you know any type of education whether it be mental health to gaming to fun to current events yeah, I just want to be out there helping out, man. I just want to reach out to people, make sure that uh, that they're up to date and that they can, you know, enjoy their time while while watching streaming or learning, you know, because that's that's ultimately where I want to be at. Oh, that's awesome, man! Is that guy right there? I see that guy. He's in the trees. Wow, that sounds like a horror movie, right? He's in the trees. <laughs> we gotta get him out of the weeds. <laughs> right? I don't even know where he's at, man. I came down here. I don't even. Ooh, ooh, there he is. He's shooting at me. He's running, man. He is running. I'm trying to get him. Don't know where he is. Oh, he really is running. Yeah. He's trying to snipe me and everything. Got him. Nice shot. <laughs> it took a while, man. Yeah, run. he was really going for it. He's like, I don't want to. Nope. I can't let them find me. Dude, look at that. We got 18 people on the map, man. Okay, so we did 13 place last. Let's see if we can get top 10 or one let's see 
<laughs> oh man, like my my controller is now. Oh, legendary down here. Okay. What what's in it? What's in? What do you see? Oh man, we got a half pot. That's always good. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm that oh. is always a good thing. Oh look, they got that hand cannon there. The epic hand cannon. Got bounties over nice. here. Nope. I marked one just so we can find people. Okay, cool. Oh man, we gotta go. That circle's coming. Oh, well, I'm stuck in the storm. Oh wow. Yeah. We are stuck in the storm. How did this happen? <laughs> Hey, you know, we're just, oh, hey, 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 this lady shooting at me in the storm, and she got me down. She's right here. I should have had my shotgun ready. She died. Oh, she died? Yeah. She shot you and died. Wow. Yeah. She got me, and then she died. There's a med kit over there, so you can go grab it. I, I have three of them. Oh, let me get that lunch pad. I have three of them on me. Okay, I'll take her lunch pad. Okay. It's actually pretty good. Man, this is a nice turnout. Yeah, it actually worked out well for everybody. <laughs> we got a launch pad. And, you know, I'm still alive. I was cutting it pretty close. Look at this. Look at this amazing building. I can't do this. I'm a runner and a gunner, sir. And jump. Let's go. I would have built higher, but I feel like someone would have shot us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, so, so that's the thing with Fortnite, man. It turns into, like, a hotel building simulator sometimes, bro. You got to be careful with that. Because, like, at the end of the day, man, you know, you build too high. They're going to knock it down, and then that's it. That's how you lose. And boom. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I heard something. You made up? Here. Yeah. Him. Nice. There you go. He has a rocket launcher. You want that rocket launcher? Take it. Take it. <laughs> okay, I will. I, I got it. I got it. All right, you got it. All right. Any rockets? I didn't see any. I'm just trying to get fully met up here because we got seven people on the map, man. Let's do it. Man, no. Oh my goodness, the wolf has that uh, alien on him. And, oh, the one that um that goes on your head. Yeah, turns you into like a rah, rah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you definitely God, so much had ammo. You definitely been playing this game, man. This is all new oh, to yeah. me right now. Oh yeah, he <laughs> does have it. Look look I, oh there's a warthog here. I shot the warthog, he's down. Oh, here comes the wolf. I messed up. Alright, okay. let's, let's go. watch out. We don't give our way our position. Yeah. We gotta move. We gotta move. We gotta move. Ooh, seven Here we go, here we go. Mm -hmm. Focusing hardcore. Here goes grenades. I'm grenades, them. get them. Any type of explosive will help. You, here, you can take the grenades. Alright, got Just them. in case you want to toss them while we're running up on them. Oh, it's three grenades. Nice. Okay. Look at all these fireflies, man. All these fireflies everywhere. <laughs> oh, God, I wish my controller wasn't dying. I don't, I don't hear any... Um, I don't hear any spaceships or any shooting. And that's kind of scary. <gasps> Ooh, I see something. Oh, there he is, up here. Yeah, yeah he's running. Right there. Those two. Oh, he saw, I think he saw us. I wish I would have kept that sniper rifle. Oh, there's more people down there with the uh, recon gun. So oh, they're, they're looking. Yeah, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna go after each other, and then, uh, you know, depending on how this goes. Oh, he has a rocket launcher too. Ooh, Got that him. was a nice shot. I saw that. Down, but I got her down on, on some help. You want to come and get me real quick if you can? Oh, behind you, behind you, behind you. Oh, 
Oh, nice, dude. Nice. I have a med kit. So we got three people on the map. That means it's just me and you and one other person. We might get this. <laughs> Look at you with the bananas. Uh, that is so funny. And it, it matches too. Do you have any other med kits? Uh, I have one. Oh, fuck, one? I see one. Do you need yeah, one? toss it to me. Yeah, be careful though. Here, right, toss it. Uh, watch this guy. Watch this guy. He gotta be coming from somewhere. Where's he at? Oh, there's one guy. Know, I don't know. Watch him. That? No, but watch out for him. Someone's snitching right now. Yeah, somebody's his, watching. His partner. Watching. His partner's watching us. I got a legendary. Don't don't run out. Don't run out there. They might shoot you. I can't see you. Come back behind the shield. Oh, he died. Nice. In the storm. Yeah. Still it. Still how dying. you end? <laughs> That's how you end it. Yeah. All wow. Right, well, so check it out. We got wow. the wow. Uh, we got the uh, victory royal here on uh, Fortnite. And that's also going to be the end of the show. So once again, man, you know, it was great having you. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you. You know, I can't wait to have you on again. And we can we can go ahead and get those gaps filled, you know, see what's going on with the uh, with the situations, you know. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, man. And continue doing what you're doing, man. This has been great. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. And to everybody watching, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in.